Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video we're talking about doing an aluminum butt joint in 63 thousandths thick aluminum. 6061 T6 aluminum, 1.6 millimeter thick. And it's a very common test, especially in aerospace industry, but it's pretty easy to fail. So I'm going to try to provide as many tips, tips and techniques as I can to give you your best shot at uh, a test joint like this. Now, if you don't, if you don't see a test joint in your future, doesn't matter. This should be good, good tips for anybody doing aluminum butt joints, whether it's aluminum pie cut tubing, or what. It's all right. So let's dive in. Something you can do to really increase your chances of passing an X-ray on a test like this is filing that sheared edge. File it down to where there's absolutely no evidence that there that it's been sheared. So you got nothing but file marks. And when you think you filed it enough, file it a little bit more and then kind of deburr the, the corners as well. You don't want any burrs hanging off of there. It's good to use a nice clean file. Just look at the difference here. The one on the bottom has been filed. The, the piece on the top has just been, you know, that's as it was sheared, and who knows how long it was stored. Lots of oxidation on that sheared, sheared surface. Could even be some corrosion. Next, do a little acetone wipe. Make sure you get rid of all the, any kind of lubricants or oily film or anything like that on the surface ink marking inks good a good acetone wipe on the on the pieces as well as on your filler metal is best practice some filler metals are really dirty now I'm going to do, use a little uh, new stainless steel brush that I've identified to only use on aluminum here that's a really good practice as well just a little small toothbrush style stainless steel brush doesn't take much and I'm just scuffing up the surface here on both sides on both pieces. I've got a piece of aluminum under it so that I don't smear crap off my work surface onto the aluminum. Now I have seen lots of different ways used to clean aluminum prior to a test joint and I've also seen problems with things like sanding discs or Scotch-Brite pads with it turning into porosity later from either polishing compound or grit embedded into the aluminum so the best thing I've found, as far as results go, is a new fine bristle stainless steel cup brush like this. And just hit it, hit it nice and easy. Just you can see it kind of uh, change the color right next to the weld. And it doesn't really take a whole lot of pressure. Just make sure it's a nice new clean brush. And this, this has yielded the best results as far as test joints go into x-ray for not having porosity. And I would give these a real quick wipe down with acetone one more time before I put them in the fixture. This is a rough fixture that I made a long time ago just so I could get started testing welders. It works really well. It's just plasma cut beveled pieces and plasma cut elongated holes and everything like that. It's got capability of argon backing gas, but I'm not using any for this aluminum joint. I'm going to get a nice little button tack on each end. Just a few little extra daubs of, of metal. It gives me a little bit of mass there. Something to start off on and then something to weld to. So they have just a, just a little bit of extra time to not blow, blow an end away. Just a few little dabs, a little button tack on each end. And you'll see why as I go. Makes it really easy to start off on. I light up and gradually press the pedal down and come inward about an eighth of an inch and then watch the rear of the puddle roll back into the tack and then I take off. Now you can see a bit of graininess here and that's largely because of there's no not much chill factor out there on the edge and the slower that the slower that uh, aluminum cools especially when you're using 4043 rod the more grainy it looks. See the, see the grains in the very right behind the puddle? That'll go away as I get going and pick up my travel speed or pretty much go away for the most part. I've just found that to be a, largely a, a cooling rate issue more so than uh, using a particular rod or technique. If you watch closely here, even though I'm going along at a pretty good clip, if you watch really closely you can see the puddle kind of sink and, and grow just a little bit each time I dab rod and that's a good indicator that you're getting full penetration when you can see the puddle sink just a little bit in between dabs. Now I'm using a, a Pyrex cup here a number five Pyrex cup just because it really helps you to see everything I'm talking about but even if you have to rewind this area this this is pretty instructive here to watch it to watch the puddle sink a little bit and then grow with each dab
Amperage, it took roughly 72 amps for the most part. Of course, that changes when you're on either end, starting off or, or uh, terminating the weld. But 063, with, with the chill block here, takes a little bit more amperage than it would without it. But without the chill block, the heat would just saturate so much that it would start welding really differently halfway through the joint. So steel is a good, is a good choice for chill material on aluminum. It doesn't chill it too much. Well, let's get a look at that. Again, I'm not using any argon. This fixture is capable of, of uh, backing up a weld with argon shielding gas, but I'm not using any for this. Let's check the penetration side. And it looks like we got pretty much full end-to-end -end penetration. That's another reason I use those button tacks on the end so I, I can get penetration all the way to the end. Now let's take a look at a restart here. You don't want to have to restart, but sometimes you have to. You could sneeze or have to cough or who knows what. So I just light up, get the puddle to the same size, back up just one ripple, and then take off, resume, resume my travel speed. Now as I'm coming into that little button tack, I'm watching it very carefully, I'm watching the front of the puddle. Just as soon as it melts into that tack, I start to let off my foot pedal. And, you know, you can tell I made a restart there, but it wasn't the end of the world. Again, restarts are something you don't want on a test joint, but sometimes, sometimes stuff happens. Well, hey, thanks very much for watching. The way I support these videos is through my online store. You can, you can find it at weldmonger.com. See you next time.